guys. So, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So, for today's video, we will discuss accounting for partnership dissolution wherein a new partner will be admitted by way of investment. So, let's start. Okay, another way of admitting a new partner is by way of investment directly to the partnership by investing cash or other form of assets. So, basically, ang new partner, directly po siya mag invest dun sa partnership. So, ang ating parties involved din is si new partner and the partnership. So, lahat po ng, ng partners ay involved. So, normally, ang entry lang naman natin dyan is magde-debit tayo ng asset, then credit tayo ng capital na i-credit natin dun sa new partner. However, in admission of partner by way of investment, most of the time, the amount credited to the new partner is, na, is not equal to his contributed capital. So, before we proceed to the actual accounting treatment for those scenario. So, kailangan muna natin i-familiarize sa sarili natin dun sa mga terminologies na may encounter natin kapag meron po tayong admission of new partner by way of investment. Okay, two major terms na pwede natin ma-encounter kapag meron po tayong partnership dissolution, admission of new partner by way of investment is the total contributed capital at the same time the total agreed capital. If you say total contributed capital, it is the sum of capital balances of the old partners and the actual investment of the new partner. So basically, ito lang po yung capital balances ng old partner before the admission of the new partner. At the same time, kung magkano yung amount na ininvest ng new partner. So normally, as is lang yan. So ang kinaibahan niya po sa total agreed capital is that, total agreed capital is the total capital of the partnership after considering the capital credits given to each partner. So, ibig sabihin po yung total contributed capital, ito po yung initial recognition, yung initial capital ng old partner, tsaka ng new partner. Away, yung total agreed capital naman, it will be the final capital balances after the partnership dissolution. So, kapag may mga changes between the total contributed capital and the total agreed capital, so, ayun po yung pag-uusapan natin sa mga susunod na slides. Okay, so another term, we have the Agreed Capital New Partner or AC-NP. So sa other books, ang tawag po natin dito ay Capital Credit sa New Partner. So a Capital Credit to the New Partner or Agreed Capital New Partner is the amount credited to the New Partner after adjustments. Kasi normally, the amount contributed by the New Partner is not equal to his Agreed Capital. So, yung magiging final capital po ni new partner, ayun po yung tatawagin po natin agreed capital or capital credit of the new partner. So, for simplicity purposes, ang ginawa ko na lang, so naglagay ako ng acronym na AC-NP, ibig sabihin po niyan, agreed capital new partner. So, meron din naman po tayong agreed capital old partner, so AC-OP. So, if we say agreed capital old partners, ito yung capital credit na ibibigay po natin sa old partners after the adjustment ng partnership dissolution. So, yung TCC, new partner and old partner, wala namang kaso yun kasi as is naman siya. So, ang nagbabago lang po kasi normally yung agreed capital ni new partner at the same time yung agreed capital ng mga old partners. Okay, other terminologies that we have to be familiar with, we have the asset revaluation goodwill, and the bonus. So, these are the reasons why the total agreed capital is different from the total contributed capital. And also, kapag pag meron pong difference between the agreed capital of the new partner from his contributed capital. So, isa-isahin natin. So, first, we have the asset revaluation. Asset revaluation is the necessary adjustment in asset values upon admission of new partner. The adjustment in asset may be determined as the difference of total agreed capital and the total contributed capital. And of course, it is only given to old partners. Kasi pag sinabi po natin asset revaluation, we have to find a specific asset that needs to be revalued. If we say uh, needs to be revalued, so kailangan po tayo maghanap ng existing asset na outdated yung kanyang value. Ibig sabihin, magkaiba yung book value niya kaysa dun sa kanyang fair value. So since ang pinag-uusapan natin dito ay existing asset, so, ang nire-revalue lang po natin is yung asset ng old partnership, which is, ang parties involved lang naman doon is yung mga old partners. Okay? So, another uh, term we have, the goodwill. So, pwede rin pong magbago ang total agreed capital and the total contributed capital by way of giving goodwill to any partners. So, pag sinabi natin goodwill, it is an intangible benefit given to the partnership by the partner. 
So it's either bibigyan niyo po natin ng goodwill si old partner o pwede rin naman bigyan natin ng goodwill si new partner. So ayun yung difference difference niya between the asset revaluation. Kasi si asset revaluation ang binibigyan lang po niyan ay si old partners while si goodwill pwede po kahit sinong bigyan basta magbibigay po siya ng intangible benefit sa company. However, sa mga bago nating standard, hindi na masyadong allowed o hindi na masyadong ini-encourage si goodwill kasi mahirap patunayin yung goodwill. Kaya most of the time, asset revaluation na lang po yung ginagamit. So last, we have the bonus. Bonus naman, the amount of capital or equity transferred by one partner to another partner. So old to new, new to old. Under the bonus method po or yung bonus approach, basically, instead of increasing the asset of the old partnership before the Uh, before the admission of the new partner. So, ang gagawin na lang po, magkakaroon na lang tayo ng bonus. So, under the bonus, the total agreed capital is equal to the total contributed capital. So, basically, kapag may difference between the agreed capital of the new partner sa kanyang contributed capital, tapos yung asset natin hindi tataas, so, ang best way is just to give bonus from old to new or kaya naman new to old. So, ito po yung tatlong reasons kaya po nagkakaroon ng adjustment sa ating partnership liquidation. Okay, so let's apply what we have learned earlier. So, yung mga terms na yun, gagamitin po natin yan sa accounting treatment ng partnership dissolution by way of investment. So, normally, yung mga reasons why the TAC or the total equity capital is different from the TCC is that nagkakaroon tayo ng bonus, revaluation, or kaya naman ng goodwill. So, may mga pagkakataon po kasi na hindi pinoprovide ng problem kung ano yung gagamitin. However, sa totoong buhay, of course, it has to be mentioned or it has to be agreed upon. However, in solving a problem, normally, hindi given kung magkakaroon ba tayo ng bonus, revaluation, or kaya naman ng goodwill. So, para malaman po natin kung anong mangyayari dun sa partnership resolution, we can use this approach. So, meron tayong available na four formulas na pwede natin gamitin. So, I don't suggest na i-memorize to gusto ko maintindihan natin yung reason bakit nagkaroon na nag tayo sa ganitong formula. So, first we have the, kapag equal daw ang total contributed capital sa total active capital, of course, and the contributed capital, new partner, is equal to the active capital of the new partner. So, ang assumption po natin dyan is no revaluation, no goodwill, and no bonus. So, bakit no revaluation and no goodwill? Kasi sabi natin kanina, if we say revaluation and goodwill, the asset of the company will increase. So, since the total contributed capital is the same, as well as the total TAC, so therefore, the asset remains the same. So, no revaluation and no goodwill must be recognized. And no bonus as well, kasi nga ang bonus, it's either old to new, new to old. So, since parehas lang naman yung contributed capital ng new partner sa kanyang agreed capital, so therefore, wala rin din tayong ibibigay na bonus. So, next, what if the total contributed capital is not equal to agreed capital? So, if that's the case, automatic, meron tayong revaluation or kaya naman, meron tayong goodwill. So, ang kailangan nyo lang tandaan dyan, kailangan pong sabihin ng problem kung revaluation ba yan o goodwill. Kasi sinabi natin kanina, Under revaluation, it is only given to all partners. While sa goodwill, kailangan natin i-identify sino ba yung bibigyan natin ng goodwill. So what if the contributed capital of the new partner is still equal to his agreed capital? If that's the case, ang, ang ating approach ay with revaluation and goodwill kasi nga hindi equal si TCC tapos si AC and no bonus. The number three, we have the total contributed capital is equal to agreed capital. So if that's the case, No revaluation and also no goodwill kasi parehas lang si contributed capital sa total agreed capital. So, if the contributed capital of the new partner is not equal to the agreed capital of the new partner, so therefore, meron po tayong bonus. So, bakit magkakaroon ng bonus? Kasi nga hindi equal yung kanyang contributed capital kesa sa kanyang agreed capital. So, pag mas mataas si agreed capital, bibigyan na natin si new partner. Pag mababa naman ang kanyang agreed capital, magbibigay siya sa old partners. So, fourth scenario, if the total contributed capital is not equal to the total agreed capital, so magkakaroon agad tayo niyan ng revaluation or goodwill. Again, it has to be stated kung revaluation or goodwill. Kasi pag revaluation, normally binibigay yan sa old partners kasi we have to find a specific asset to be revalued. 
So, in case naman, the contributed capital of the new partner is still not equal to his agreed capital. So, ito po yung labo-labo na. So, all of the above. So, meron tayong revaluation and meron tayong bonus. So, ito po yung mga naglalarong formula kapag meron po tayong addition of new partner by way of investment. So, para lang mas madali nyo siyang maintindihan, kapag meron pong difference between the TCC and TAC, ang approach po dyan, meron siyang laging revaluation or kaya naman goodwill, whichever is applicable. However, if the contributed capital of the new partner is not equal to his uh, agreed capital, so lagi nyo lang tatangdaan, associated po yan sa bonus. Kasi nga, dahil hindi parehas yung kinontribute niya dun sa magiging capital credit niya, of course, meron tayong bonus. So sa TCC, TAC, revaluation yon and goodwill, Kapag contributed capital new partner, tapos agreed capital new partner, kapag hindi parehas, ang approach natin magkakaroon ng bonus. Gagamitin mo lang po ito kapag hindi provided ng problem kung anong gagamitin. Of course, pag sinabi ng problem, kaya may revaluation. So kahit hindi mo na to sundin kasi automatic naman na masosolve natin yung problem. Okay, so let's have an illustration. So basically, sundan nyo lang po kung paano siya ginagawa. Then pwede nyo reinvent kung Anong mas madali sa inyo? So, A and B was partners of AB partnership with the capital balances of 100,000 each, sharing profit equally, decided to admit C as a new partner. So, C invested 200,000 cash for a 50% interest in the partnership. So, the total agreed capital is 400,000 pesos. So, para ma-analyze po natin mabuti kung magbibigay ba tayo ng bonus or magkakaroon ba ng revaluation, mas maganda po gagamit po tayo ng table. So, initial table lang po ito kasi kapag merong revaluation at bonus, we have to create another one. Ito ginagamit lang just to determine kung may revaluation ba siya or meron tayong bonus. So, basically, you have to maintain four columns. Yung first column, we have the partners. Second column, the TCC or the total contributed capital. Third column, total agreed capital. And the last column is the difference. So, ang ginawa ko po, color-coded color po siya. So, si A and B, pares po lang silang blue kasi they are old partners. Tapos si C naman is yung new partner. Yung total natin is green. So, ngayon, since provided naman na yung total contributed capital ng mga partners, so ilalatag lang natin kasi given naman. So, si A B, meron daw silang 100,000. So, ilagay mo lang 100,000, 100,000. Tapos si C naman, ang ininvest niya, 200,000, ilagay mo lang. So, therefore, the total contributed capital is 400,000. Then, sabi dyan, binigay na din sa atin, the total agreed capital is 400,000 pesos. So, ilagay lang natin 400,000 pesos. So, ngayon, paano kuhain yung total agreed capital ng mga old partners saka ng new partner? So, basically, pwede po natin gawing basis since given na si total agreed capital. So, ang gagawin lang natin, kuhain po natin yung portion na mabupunta kay C. So, sabi daw dyan, 50% of the interest of the partnership will go to C. So basically 400,000 times 50%. So ang uh, total ang agreed capital ng new partner si C, ibibigay po natin siya ng 200,000 pesos. So since the agreed capital and the contributed capital of C is the same, so wala po tayong babaguhin agreed capital kay A and B. So parehas lang po 'yan. So 100,000, 100,000. So kuhain natin yung difference, kung mapapansin niyo, wala nagbago. Yung difference lahat nila ay zero. So, ngayon i-test natin. So, may bonus ba siya or may revaluation? Ang first test natin, so, total contributed capital is equal ba sa total agreed capital? The answer is yes. Why? The total contributed capital is 400 and the total agreed capital is also 400,000 pesos. So, therefore, we can assume or we can conclude that there is no revaluation nor goodwill. Another rule or another natitingnan, meron bang bonus? So, para malaman natin kung may bonus, check natin yung agreed capital ni new partner versus natin sa kanyang contributed capital. So, sa case natin, the agreed capital of the new partner, which is C, is 200,000. Then, yung total contributed capital niya is also 200,000. So, therefore, since the same lang yung agreed capital sa contributed capital ni new partners, therefore, no bonus must be recognized. So, since no revaluation, no goodwill, so madali lang po ang ating recording. Ang recording lang po natin ay as is. So, debit ka ng cash, 100, ay 200,000 pesos. Then, credit ka ng C-capital, 200,000 
Pesos.